Welcome everyone to video two of Be an Innovator with Flow. If you're joining us new, we are going step-by-step -step to build an automated business process with Flow from start to finish. So watch each one of these videos, share your progress online, and get a chance to win some fun prizes. All right, so for video one, we learned about the best practices for identifying the problem, gathering those requirements, really understanding uh, what we need um, to solve for. For video two, we're gonna look at defining that process and mapping it out on paper so that we can completely understand what the process looks like from start to finish before we actually get hands-on in the tool and start building. It's a lot easier to make changes on paper than once you're in the product, right? All right, so I'm super excited to hear from um, Principal Admin Evangelist Leanne Reimel and Senior Admin Evangelist Mark Baseman um, about how we can do this. Let's go hear from them. Thanks, Rebecca. And welcome back, awesome admins, for our second video of the Be an Innovator Flow campaign. So last time, we spent some time talking about what the problem is that we're trying to solve. And we talked about how we gather requirements, do discovery, start to identify that problem that we're gonna solve for, and really start to identify what are the specific requirements that we have from our different users or stakeholders. That's it. Awesome. So we did that. We loved seeing some of your responses on Twitter and seeing the work that you're doing to solve business problems at your companies. And we're still hard at work at Sunshine Chocolates. So let's talk about what we do after that. So we've identified what our requirements are, but Mark, what do we want to do next? So the next thing we need to know is doing a deep dive into each of the steps of our process so that we understand in super great detail exactly what it is that the business process is going to be and how we're going to identify optimized steps for in eventually automating that process in Salesforce. Awesome. So remember, when we say process, we're talking about our business process for right now, not process builder. And one of the reasons that we want to identify exactly which steps we're going to be going through is so that we can select the right tool to accomplish our you know, end solution, right? And so first, let's jump into our whiteboard and let's document what the steps are of that business process. So here we're in our whiteboard. And now the first thing we want to make sure we clarify is what user are we designing this business process for? So we're going to identify our project user and our sales user that we identified before. Now our project user, the first thing they're going to do, their experience is going to be that they're going to the project record, right? So we want them to go to the project record. And on the project record, we want this feedback form to be made visible to them, to somehow be launched or made visible to them or made accessible to them. Then we want our user to enter the project feedback. And when they enter project feedback, then we want that project feedback, that, that information that they're entering to be saved to a related project feedback form. Now, this is where it's important that we identify the different users that we're working with because they're experience might um, impact one another's. And so here we do want both the project users and the sales users to be able to report on problem projects or kind of high priority projects. And things to think about when you're doing this process is handoffs between people or between teams are always really important and particularly focusing on those might be areas that you can optimize and improve. Awesome. So we've got our process, our business process documented. Now let's spend some time talking about what automation tool do we use? We have a ton of automation tools at Salesforce and there's a lot of ways as builders, as admins, as developers that you can automate business processes on the Salesforce platform. And it's really important to be well versed in all of those so that you can make the right decisions as you move forward in building your solution. So Mark, why don't you take us through some of the business processes that we have? For sure. So it's very tempting as builders to start with the tool and start with the thing that you're going to eventually build with. But it's really important to take a step back and look at your business process first. So for instance, if the business process that you're looking at is you're automating a bunch of repetitive user tasks, maybe they're um, closing a case and sending an email and doing something like that, um, and users might need to customize it themselves, well, that might be a use case for the macros. And if you haven't played with macros, these are something that are really powerful. Um, they're often used in a console scenario. So if you're looking at a list of particular records of a certain type, like cases, for instance, um, these are really powerful and macros have their own language. So 
definitely check out macros. They're super cool. Um, but obviously we're not talking about macros today as a flow campaign. So, okay. So, uh, the next thing, if you are doing things like, uh, for example, uh, an approval type automation, meaning that your uh, an expense needs a, a routing or a travel um, travel approval might need something. So I'm hinting at the approvals. This is something where you can uh, lock a record from being edited bef until and unless someone needs to change it or route it to someone else. So that's the approvals area. Uh, now maybe there you have some other behind the scenes automation that doesn't require any user input, but does, uh, based on some criteria, need to do something after a certain time and needs to take some actions. Well, this is a perfect use case for something like Process Builder or something like Apex Triggers. And finally, the last thing that I will talk about, or you could also use Flow <laughs> without a screen. I was going to say, you might be, you, miss, you skipped one there I skipped for a one. second. <laughs> flow. I forgot about Flow. So, um, and finally, if you're doing any sort of guided visual experience, so something where you're taking input from the user, uh, then this is very obviously a use case for either custom components. You can always get some custom components, maybe work with a developer or get something from the app exchange, or what we're going to do today, Flow Builder. Right, exactly. And so this is, I love that you mentioned that we can use both custom components and flow builder for that guided visual experience, because it's important to think about maybe what is some of those that legacy code that you have, or maybe it is something that was built with like visual force or custom code in some way that you can replace that now with flow screens. Um, that's a great kind of use case to think about where flow might fit in your org and helps you reduce technical debt. And Absolutely. Yeah, and it out. reduces your code base, right? So I think any time that we can build in Salesforce with clicks and not code, it's it's often better for the health of our org and also for kind of our maintenance and upkeep schedule and just the number of people that it requires or number of hours that it requires to kind of maintain that and update that. Um, so it makes it really accessible and, and more technical people can be working on it. So we're a big advocate of building first with clicks and Flow is a really important tool to do that. Um, so this was, that was a great overview. Thank you. I know we've got a wealth of automation tools at Salesforce, but let's take a look now again at our whiteboard and look at our business, you know, our business process that we documented, what it should look like and apply the right automation tool. So when we look at our whiteboard, we see that we want this to be kind of a user experience when they go to their project, that we want that feedback form, that kind of feedback input area to be launched or to be visible. And so when we think about the matrix of automation tools, that really points to using Flow Builder and using a screen flow. So we'll be talking more in the next video about the different types of flows, but the flows that we talk about most often are either screen flows or auto launch flows. And basically the difference that you need to know is a screen flow is a flow that starts with or involves screens that are exposed to your users. And so there's some sort of user interaction usually, or it's things that are, are made visible on like record pages or home pages or you know, anywhere in Salesforce. Um, so it's that screen interaction, that end user interaction. Whereas an auto launch flow is a flow that you can launch via process builder, via Apex. We often build flows that we launch versus pro uh, via process builder. So if it's a flow that you want to uh, trigger, you know, when a record changes or when data changes in some way or when a certain kind of date time has passed. Um, that's something that you would be doing with an auto launch flow because it's not an end user engagement in the same way. So that's kind of the biggest difference to think about. Now we know what tool we're going to use and we're done our process automation whiteboard. So what we want from you is to whiteboard your business process and you can sketch it on a napkin, write it on a notepad. It doesn't matter what tool you use, but think about the exact steps that your process should go through, yep. right? And then we'll be able to apply the automation tool selection matrix against it and arrive at hopefully flow, because that's what we're gonna be right. building here. But hint, have user input. Yeah, have, have a, a user, have a user input, that's what we're gonna be going through. But you know, think about what it means to document all the steps that your users would be going through and how you want that data to be kind of moving through Salesforce. And that's a great step to go through um, as you're thinking about building automation for your orgs. So thanks so much, Mark, for your automation selection you overview of all the great tools. And thank all of you for participating. And we look forward to seeing your sketches. And we will see you next time. Back to you, Rebecca. Thank you, Mark and Leanne, for really breaking down the process behind the process.
Uh, to summarize, my main takeaways are one, to talk through the process. Take the time to really do a deep dive so that you can start to build a picture of what we, you know, what we want to optimize. And that leads me to the next point, visualize each step. Put yourself in your user's shoes and draw out what happens throughout the process. Lastly, identify the right automation tool. As you know, Salesforce is awesome because you have all of these amazing tools at your fingertips to build with, but with great power comes great responsibility. So understand your options and tools before you dive into building. All right, I know we shared a lot of info here in this video, so definitely check out the trail mix where we've added some extra resources to help you understand this important step in our journey. All right, so now it's your turn. Draw your process diagram on a piece of paper or on a napkin, like Leanne said, however you feel comfortable um, sketching out that diagram. Please do that and share it with us on Twitter using hashtag be an innovator to enter to win. All entries for video two must be completed and tweeted to us by midnight. So that's 11.59 p.m. Pacific time on April 23rd. Restrictions do apply, so see rules for details. And then join us for video three of Be an Innovator with Flow to learn the ins and outs of Flow Builder. That's right, we're getting hands on with Flow Builder. All right, see you next time. Awesome